Welcome to the Emerging Screenwriters Interview Series, sponsored by ISA. I am Shana Weber, and today we are here with... Rob Ripley. Hi, Rob. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Shana? Good. Thank you for being here. We are going to dive right in, okay. and we're going to start with some fun icebreaker questions. Okay. What are you watching right now? Oh my gosh. This is such a terrible question, because I'm... I feel like everybody's watching everything. Um, right, right. No, it's, uh, it's, it's a big eclectic stew right now. Um, I'm just catching up finally on the last season of Hacks. Okay. Um, every week I wait with bated breath for Abbott Elementary. Okay. Um, we just finished Minx, I which Minx. I highly recommend to anybody who digs the 70s. I can never remember the name of it. The House of Dragons? House of the Dragon. House of the Dragon. House I, of I the get dragon. it messed up too. So, yeah, I'm like, so. is it House of Dragons or House, House of the, the Dragon? Dragons, I think yes. it's more formal. Or is the Dragon. I always tell my husband, is there a new episode of the show about the dragons? <laughs> right, the dragony so, thing? Yeah. The yeah. Game of Thronesy dragon thing? Yeah, so, so we're enjoying the heck out of that. Um, and then Our Flag Means Death, which I think I've watched oh, yes. five times. Um, and I was so excited to hear that it's coming back. Oh, good. Great. Yeah, so. So basically, you spend all your time watching TV. Uh, if I'm not writing, I'm generally watching something. Yeah, it feels that way. Yeah. Um, and then who in the entertainment industry, film, TV, anywhere in between, um, who are your heroes? Who do you look up to in terms of like, who do you want to be like? That's a really good question. Um, and I used to have a lot of prepared answers for it. But I think now I just look at people who, who develop these careers over time. Mm -hmm. um, and they're, they just, they're, they're consistently putting out product that, that is, that their voice just shines so brightly. Mm -hmm. I'm amazed at that. Like, I love it. And I love to watch it. Like Quinta Brenson, I think is fantastic. And she's been, you know, she's been working her fanny off for so long around town. Mm -hmm. And, and now she's got this show with Abbott Elementary that is just so quintessentially her. Mm -hmm. Uh, I just think that kind of, like, those are the people that I love to watch uh, and experience sort of, you know, vicariously their joy of, right. of, of getting that kind of, uh, of that career. Finally, like. Yeah, yeah, and I hope that, you know, whatever pavement I'm working on on laying down now is is doing that for me. Um, that when things, you know, when, as things start to continue to click more and more, um, that, that I've got enough sort of fortitude um, and understanding about who I am to really just lean into that in in this industry we always think it's like some overnight success yeah. but like in her case specifically like she has worked consistently and been a writer and just like and just never quit no and finally and that's what we all see is that under working 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 and finally like okay yeah and she can handle it because she's put in the work and the effort I've never met her so I, right but I I just get such a sense that she knows who she is yeah. and she knows what makes her tick. And I think that's the, the older I get and the more I do this, the more I, I feel like that really is kind of, if there's a magic bullet to any of this, it's not for success, but it's for like happiness. Yeah. <laughs> it really is learning to understand who I am and, and what makes me tick as a storyteller. Mm -hmm. um, because anytime I deviate from that, it's, it's just never as, as enjoyable or, mm. or fun, or I think, um, I don't think the product is as good. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you're, I guess you're right. It takes a while to sort of like cultivate and be confident and own and push your voice and your, your storytelling. For sure. And, yeah. you know, in learning, learning to sort of, I don't want to say stand up for that, but really mm -hmm. like kind of know, have a really strong sense and understanding of like, okay, this is a non-negotiable in this project. Sure. Yeah. And there's only a couple. There yeah. can only be a couple. Yeah. But really understanding that these are the things that make the project the project and that make it mm -hmm. sort of like mine. Right. That's, yeah. These are the couple of things that nobody else could do the way I do it. Right. It took me a really long time to figure that out. Yeah, it does. <laughs> um, let's go back to the beginning. Okay. For you all the way back. Oh, boy. To the beginning. When did you first have an idea or did you know right away that you wanted to be a writer did you have another path that you went on first <laughs> how did you begin it's good it's a good set of questions um i i wrote as long as i could remember i was a voracious reader as a kid because mm. i was so i was so painfully shy and weird and awkward mm. um i took refuge in books and so mm. i would read two three books a week as a kid um and i loved it and i think that's where i really started to write and i would start writing my own fan fiction of Encyclopedia Brown, of Nancy Drew, of Wonder Woman, the Hardy Boys. It was a very strange stew of, of 
who I was writing fan fiction for, but it was just what I did in my free time. I loved doing it. And then I, when I hit second grade, I started um, playing an instrument. And we discovered very quickly I had, a, I had a really massive aptitude for that. Mm-hmm. And in my family, like a lot of families, when you're good at something, that's sort of who you become. Right. Um, and that kind of took off. And so even through middle school and high school and college, I took all of these English classes. And I loved reading and writing. Um, but it was, it was just not sort of a consideration because music weighed so heavily in my life and then I had this infamous quarter life crisis as my father likes to call it (laughs) um, at 26 and I completely melted down and I quit music I quit teaching I sold everything I owned and moved to New York sight unseen um, and fell into theater and that's where I reconnected with writing again as a playwright Wow, yeah. let's talk about that. So you say you fell into theater, but what does that mean? <laughs> yeah, um, I was looking for, I had started I had started doing a book. It's not so in vogue anymore, but it used to be. It was Julia Cameron's The Artist's Way. I've done that. Yes, yep. and I was so deeply unhappy. And I had talked to, but this was before I had moved to New York, I had talked to a friend of mine, an old high school friend, who had had massive success as a dancer in New York. And she and I had talked on the phone and hung up. And two days later, I got FedEx this book the artist's way with a note from her saying promise me you don't do anything rash do this book first and if you need anything call me love lisa i said okay what is this and so i started doing the exercises and it led me back to to writing and theater which i just really dug as a kid um and so when i got to new york i was like well, what am i gonna do i spent the first i think three weeks living at a ymca i said like, i gotta figure out what i'm gonna do with my life and so i just walked into a theater and i said do you guys need help with anything Whatever you need. I'll take tickets. I'll build sets. I, I've got carpentry skills. Whatever you need. And that's how I got into it. And then I would just sit and watch rehearsal after rehearsal after rehearsal. Wow. Yeah. yeah. How long were you in New York? Uh, it was only a few years. It? And then I came back out here. My my family is up in the Bay Area now. Okay. And, uh, um, to be closer to them. And, uh, and I was out here for a few years. I was like, okay, well, it's entertainment. I, I'll make this shift. And very quickly, I was like, I need skills. <laughs> I need really hard <laughs> skills. So that's when I decided to, um, I went back to, to school and got my master's degree in, okay. in uh, dramatic writing. That's when everything kind of started. All right, earnest. so let's let's go from that point. Yeah. You've gotten your master's degree, and then you're <laughs> like, what am I doing? What were you doing? My degree was two years. The summer between, I got an internship working for a production company run by one of our alumni out here. So it was great. I was I was a development intern and then uh it worked out really really well and she said you know what when you're done come back i'll hire you full-time so i did so i spent i think five six years in development working my way up um to like a ce and uh and realized when i was like what am i doing i just spent way too much time and money to get a degree in writing to go into development (laughs) right so um and i realized too that feature development wasn't quite for me because of the the glacial pace Mm -hmm. Uh, It wasn't really what thrilled me, but really, I was like, oh my gosh, I've got to do something. I got to get back into writing. And I got really lucky. I had optioned a book from a writer who she's since passed away, but she was, she could take two people to this residency in France for six weeks Mm -hmm. in the North of France. And that was my out Mm -hmm. of development. I was able to say, I'm sorry, I've got to go. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to. This is my two week notice because I'm going to go do this thing, um, and that's that's what happened. So wow. that's kind of how I was able to get back into it. Right. Yeah. So when it comes to your writing, mm-hmm. what do you write? What is your? Are you genre specific? Are you kind of all over the place? I'm not all over the place, but I'm not hardcore in one genre. Mm-hmm. Um, I tend to write dramedies, thrillers. That's sort of like where at least the last few years everything has sort of been circling. Mm-hmm. Um, which is great, uh, and I really love both of them. I've concentrated mostly on television the okay. last the last three years or so, but I've also had a uh, weirdly what got me through the pa- pandemic was a series of re- feature rewrites, which was terrific. Um, uh, so it's it's been great, but yeah, mostly I it's I stopped thinking too hard about genre. Mm-hmm. Um, I would do, I used to really get sort of wrapped around the axle about that um, because so much of what we're told is like, you need to have twenty five scripts in this specific genre. And, you know, and I tried and I tried, but it, I figured out was there just there's ideas that I tend to come back to and investigate over and over again. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it's in the same genre and sometimes it's not. My writing almost has um, 
some el- some underdog mm-hmm. element, some element of social injustice being perpetrated, um, and it almost always revolves around some sort of family, whether it's nuclear or chosen. So I once I figured that out, it was I could breathe a lot easier. Right. Um, it made it made picking projects and then developing them um, much less angst filled for me. Um, but yeah, so it's you know I've dabbled in some other genres. Uh, like I love romantic comedies. Mm. It's it's hard to find those three things that I just mentioned that exist <laughs> in that particular genre. Sure, um, it's yeah. not very romantic or funny. A social injustice, right? It's, I mean, <laughs> you know, it's can be, but, but yes. maybe one one off. <laughs> I optioned a book recently. Um, it's it's going to be a romantic dramedy. Okay, um, but it's it's against uh, the backdrop of baseball. Mm-hmm. So that's another version or another genre mm-hmm. and, you know it's sort of mini genre that i'm playing around in mm-hmm. how yeah. do you think your time being a musician <laughs> and i don't know what instrument you played so you should tell us that um how do you think that that has helped you in your screenwriting or has it uh it's helped me immeasurably for in a lot of different ways mm-hmm. um as a musician there's there's a very strange discipline that goes with being a professional musician. It's very, very strange. Um, and I don't mean that negatively at all, but it requires so much time alone mm-hmm. in a practice room with you and your instrument. <laughs> and ultimately that, that kind of taught me how to, how to work that way. Right. You know, it's, it's funny cause I hear a lot of writers saying, Oh, it's such a lonely experience. And I, I've just never experienced that <laughs> because it just is how I've always worked since I was 13 or 14, right. you know, I would spend six or seven hours a day in a practice room by myself. You know? sure. The other part, like more um, tactically, it's, I write very musically. Mm. Um, there's, I use a lot of, um, I think about script elements in, in ways I think about different elements of music too, mm. whether it's pacing, rhythm, oh, right. tone, yeah. key, like all those things. There's, I have a, there's a there's just a version of it that has has built been built over time in my brain that I apply to writing, hmm. um, and I, usually when I talk talk to anybody about a script, it it's usually very heavily uh, reliant on those kinds of musical metaphors. Yeah. Hmm. I'm married to musicians. So <laughs> I, I I feel you, but I could not. I mean, writing music to me is like what? What? It's just so like. You know what I mean? It's so just like tight that it's, I don't know, choosing the right word. Choosing a word is hard enough. Choosing the right perfect word is like, I don't know what to do. It's very so. strange. And with music, like there's, I think it's a little bit more limited in the, the best of ways yeah. because there are only X number of notes. Yeah. It's not, right? an, there's not endless possibilities. Correct. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's the beauty is in the combining of it, which creates endless sure. versions of things, yes. which I love. Um, but it's not quite the same. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I think it's easier, it's easier to get stuck trying to decide, pick a word yeah. than to say, like oh, it. just, just throw a D flat in there. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so how many scripts have you written now? And then how many are you, so real, real honesty, how many scripts have you written versus how many do you, are you shopping around or do you show? Or- if I go back, I mean, I don't know how far back I want to go because there's a chunk of scripts that. It, it it was just it's sort of like you know when you're in middle school and you try to start to date you're mm-hmm. not really dating you're just kind of like going through the motions and pretending you are so there's a chunk of scripts that I don't that were just more like figuring some stuff out crushes yes yes <laughs> they were like little crushes that never really came to anything and didn't most of them aren't finished but um, right now I've got fourteen mm-hmm. total that's feature and um, television that I would feel comfortable saying, oh, you're looking for something like that? Let me send you this. Right. Right? That's a total. And that breakdown is, it's five pilots and tw- I think 12 features. Oh, that's so, great. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, right now it's, we're, my manager, we're out with, we're out with two pilots and a feature. And we're, as soon as I finish the feature that I'm working on now, we will go out with that one. Should be short. We should be within the next month. So yeah. four. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. what is your short-term goals right now, and your long-term goals, and then like the big, the big dream. <laughs> short-term. That's interesting. Short-term. I, I'm. 
I really want a staff. That's kind of my, my next sort of big milestone um, on the TV side is staff. Um, it's, you know, everybody wants to sell something. So I don't know if that's, that even, does it even mean anymore? I, I don't know. Um, sure. Let's put that in there. I'm going to, I'd like to sell something. That's another short term growth goal. Um, ultimately, I would love to, uh, with staffing, I function really, really well in a group environment, mm. a group of writers. Um, I really love it. And so, I mean, ultimately one day, as far as a career goes, I would love to run a show. That would be, that's kind of a long term. Yeah. Yeah. Um, dream, big dream wise, uh -huh. I would love to have a production company that is, that is focused on queer um, and women's stories mm -hmm. specifically. Awesome. Developing those. What has the path been like for you in terms of trying to get staffed? Um, what has that world been like? And is it very difficult? How does somebody like yourself get staffed? I can't say it's been difficult or easy. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, you know I, but it's it's been a lot of meetings. A lot, a lot, a lot of meetings. Um, and they've been, it's been great. Uh, just meeting so many people over the last 12 months or so. Um, I just know that, you know, there's, there's a lot of different pressures in the industry right now, I think, that are starting to dictate rooms, mm. uh, maybe a little bit more intensely than they have. Okay. Um, it's room size, room mm -hmm. level, those kinds of things. I just finished the, um, the, the Warner Media, which is now, I think, Warner Media Discovery Fellowship. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Yeah, that just ended in, in um, September. I've gotten a handful of meetings that have come out of that with some showrunners, which is great. Uh, it's just bad timing because everything's kind of already up and running. Um, so it's, you know, it, it's tough and it's, it's a lot of, you know, like all writers, it's, you're pitching yourself over and over and over again and you're saying kind of the same things. But what I'm really excited about is I've, I think I've made some connections with people who I feel like, oh, I would really want to spend time working mm -hmm. with that person, which is, to me, that's, when you boil everything down, that seems to be like, that sits at the heart of all of it. Totally. You know, there's yep. there's talent, there's work ethic, and there's just likability. Yeah. And wanting to be in a room with somebody for eight or ten or twelve hours a day. Forever. Yeah. yeah. When you finally got the fellowship, how many times had you applied? <laughs> um, and then what was it about this time that maybe was the kicker that got you in? So I've applied to. I'm just trying. To, I'm doing the tally in my head over the years, over the past, let's say, ten years. I've applied to 16 different programs. Some of those okay. are, you know, one program more than once, mm -hmm. but 16 times. And this is the only one I've gotten. Um, and I, I think now I just, you know, there's, I think my writing has matured in the last mm -hmm. two years, three years, you know, that's, that's making it, I think it's just starting to feel accessible mm -hmm. to a lot of people. Like it's, it's speaking the way that it wasn't before. Um, Interesting. Yeah, and I, that has a lot to do with some some hard work I've done specifically on, you know, after I got got a lot of notes on scripts, and I started, I'm a bit of a data geek, so I sort of like made a spreadsheet and started to figure out like, well, what does this mean? Like, you know, I keep getting these types of notes. What does this really, really mean? And so I made a concerted effort to figure out um, what that meant and how to solve for that. Mm -hmm. um, and the big the big difference has been writing emotionally. And by that, okay. I don't mean the characters are wailing and gnashing teeth, um, but how to really make the words that are on the page deliver an emotional experience, mm -hmm. whether it's an episode, whether it's an act, a scene, or even just like either a line of dialogue or a single line of action description, really bringing the, the emotion to that. Mm -hmm. Because that's, in the end, and I can't remember who said it, but it's stuck with me, is that is television and film is just the business of emotional delivery that's all we're doing is making people feel things mm -hmm. right when we show up to a movie we pick out a movie we're going to go see we pick we pick a genre based on what it is we want to feel right if, yeah. if we're in the mood to be scared we're going to go see a horror movie you know if we're in the mood to be like on the edge of our seat we're going to pick a thriller right if we want mm -hmm. a good cry we're going to pick a drama mm -hmm. that's all it is and i know it sounds so simple but what it it took me forever to figure that out and for that to click once it did, then it was it was learning how to write emotionally toward the kind of story that I'm writing. And it's I think it's really made a big difference. That is probably one of the best pieces of like knowledge that I've heard oh. in these. 
just because it's so true. When you, even when you're done with your script and you're pitching, when you're in your pitch deck, when you're pitching verbally, when you're meeting with people, it is about emotion and it is about how do I connect with this person or how does this piece connect with that person so right. that they remember it and feel something and, feel. and then they carry that with them right. to whoever they have to pitch it to or sell it to or whatever and then it translates to the audience. Well, you just so. hit the hit on the key and that is they got to feel something to remember it, right? Mm -hmm. And I think as writers, we get so wrapped around the axle and focused and it needs to happen, mm -hmm. right? We've got to focus on plotting and structure mm -hmm. and you know character arc and all it like it that's those are the mechanics of what we do right but feeling is huge um it was i think shonda's master class mm -hmm. she was talking about there's I, I still laugh every time i think about it she's like it was about pitching and she's like and and i got to this point where i realized it, I, I was building up to this big romantic scene and i hadn't written it so I didn't, I didn't know what to tell him. So all I said is, it's the most amazing, romantic, sexy scene you've ever seen. And then I just went on to the next thing. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's so smart, right? Because that's that's what we feel, right? And it's, it's whatever the they think of the most romantic, sexy scene, all right? of a sudden they're holding on to right? that. Yep. You know, Executive <laughs> A was like, oh, flowers by the beach. And Executive B is like whips and chains. And Executive <laughs> C, you know, it's... It's letting it fill it Puppy in. Dogs. I, good, yeah, <laughs> and I think good writing does that anyway. Is it leaves room for either the reader and then eventually an audience to fill some stuff in on their own. Yeah, that's the most satis for me. That's the most satisfying experience I get as a reader or a, a viewer. How did you first learn and be involved with ISA? My first involvement was with one of the table read my screenplay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, the the first time I won that, and I want to say it was twenty sixteen. It's been a while. Yeah, you guys have been carting me around for, for a while now. Um, yeah, that's that's when I first encountered the organization. Uh, I, I was stunned I won that. And amazingly enough, that winning that contest is what got me my manager. Mm. There, was, there was a producer who loved the piece so much and said, oh my gosh, I think, you know who would be great? If, let me hook you up with this manager because I think you guys would get along like gangbusters mm -hmm. and he'll love your stuff. And he did. And, he, and that is the industry right there. Yes. It's about so-and-so <laughs> recommends you to so-and-so. Boom. You they know They love I mean? your work. Yeah. They see potential. Yeah. That's amazing. I, know. I love people like that. I love people that connect people. Oh, I do too. I mean, that, those are the best. That's what so many great producers do around town. Yeah. Is there, I mean, it's, you know, it used to be the role Even writers. Well, you know, if like you're, if it's not your thing, or you know you don't have something that fits in that to share that and pull other writers in that you know i mean that's really that's really important and ultimately you will get it back in oh, the end oh without a doubt yeah i threw some jobs at I don't know, three or four writers um, right before the pandemic mm -hmm. that they just weren't right i knew it wasn't right for me i was like i will not serve this well i appreciate you coming to me but here's who you should go to mm -hmm. um, and three of the four got hired for different projects, which was great. But then during the pandemic, that's how I met this feature work, mm. is they did the same thing. Yep. Right? Yep. Um, it's being good to each other. I mean, yeah. The industry's hard enough without no. slagging off on one another. You right. know what I mean? There's <laughs> enough for everybody. I mean, there's really not, but there is. <laughs> there is. Um, okay, so how, when, when you think of ISA, how do you feel like that they have helped you the most in what ways what do you what do you like or appreciate or what sort of sets ISA apart it's a great question I mean and you know over the years the ISA has helped me in a number of ways that I was aware of at the moment and then ways that afterwards I look at it's like oh wow look what they did that's amazing um you know it's like I said it got me a manager mm -hmm. which was no small small feat but then you know it's like I've met so many people at different events, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's, you know, a, a, some sort of a class, a master class, or, you know, what was it, Third Thursdays? Third Thursdays, right? yeah. I always want to call them Thirsty Thursdays, so you know where my brain is. Um, Mine too, because yeah. that's what I would like to do with this. <laughs> um, you know, or, or other smaller events too. Mm -hmm. It's just, I've met so many people that that have been, I mean, it, I look back and it's, it's just created this sort of collage of help mm -hmm. in one way or another. Um, 
and that's kind of broad, but like specifically, I have met people, I mean, the, the ISA themselves, right? The, the, the people there, but also the people I've met through them, they have like, they have just made me step up and be a better writer. Mm. Like, any times I, I, I've gotten notes, it's, it's almost always been incredibly helpful. Candid, mm-hmm. but helpful. Not just, this is what's wrong. Right. Right? But it's, look, I don't think this is working. Tell me what you think. Tell me what you're trying to accomplish with that, mm, right. and let's let's figure out a way to get there. Like that's, I to me that is that is the gold star of, of our industry is is great notes because yeah. as we all know, we often don't get helpful notes, mm. and so I you know I look back and the people that I've met have done all of that, um, you know, and then, you know, it's here's an opportunity, you know, throw your best effort at it. That's fantastic. I mean, I, there aren't a lot of organizations that have access are you talking about writing gigs yeah yeah i mean they just that offer all of that that's yeah. fantastic yeah so it's been a very broad <laughs> set of things that that um that the but you've been around for a while yeah like you said you 2016 you went table read my screenplay so you've seen the isa evolve and grow, and grow and become more more valuable in a sense but just the work that's being done behind the scenes to like create relationships that right. then you know, we share with with our writers. I know you have a manager, so that's, you know, the person who does a lot of that stuff for you. But has Felicity and the team, you know, kept in contact and, like, sort of nurtured what you were doing still? Oh, for sure. Okay. I mean, and it's one of, like, you know, when I have something new, that's, it's almost always, you know, the ISA team's almost where I go first. Okay. It's one of the, you know, it's, there's, I always, I try to do, like, five or seven beta reads of something new and they're always one of them because I know I'm going to get really thoughtful and smart feedback that's going to help me uncover what it is I'm trying to accomplish with this first draft. Right. Yeah. And then just, it, Felicity is always, always willing to do that. So, right. And that's been, and yeah, and over the years it's grown and grown. Like it's amazing to see the relationships that the organization has built and that so willing to like, like let us be the beneficiaries of those things <laughs> I think is amazing. Right. Yeah. Well, that's good to hear. Okay, so fun questions. Oh, boy. What? No, these are fun. What's your favorite word? Rhythm. Well, that makes sense. <laughs> I just, I love the two Ys. Right. I, it's. Do you spell it out in your brain no, when you it's, say it? I'd love to say it. It just, it's one of those words <laughs> that just rolls off the tongue. Interesting. Yeah. I just love a Y in a, uh-huh. in a, in a word with no vowels. I don't know. It just makes me happy. <laughs> so. I, when, I remember back when I was in typing class, like every word you would like. You know, like even when you're talking, you would be doing this in your brain. Right. So that's kind of what I do with the rhythm. I'm like, what? Heart man. You have to figure, okay. <laughs> figure like, make the, the brain hand right. correlation. Like, yeah, there's a few it, words. There's like, like a glitch where you're all of a sudden like, wait, what? There's a few words I can't spell, mm-hmm. but I can type. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's one of them. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm the same way with like medieval. 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 Yeah. 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 I'm like, okay. Or camouflage. <laughs> Camouflage. <laughs> That's it's so funny that you say that. I uh, one of my current works in progress, camouflage is a word that appears multiple times, uh-huh. and for the life of me, like, every it's, time, every time, I'm still like, no, "That's not right. That's not where the U goes." Oh, you want to know my funny one that I write? Which this is this is re- actually really funny, and I kind of want to base the script around it. But when I write husband, I write husband. <laughs> That's. Know. That's Not the title even close in the thing. for a raunchy comedy. <laughs> I know, right? And I know exactly what that movie is. Husband. <laughs> there we go. I don't know why. Just It's not even on the same side of the thing. You know what I mean? It's not. No. It? Just what comes so out is husband. I don't That's know. That's funny. Since I was little. I, I can't, for the life of me, I can't spell bureaucracy. What is your least favorite, most annoying pet PV grammar or spelling error? <sighs> bureaucracy. <laughs> it's, it drives me crazy. I, I can't get it right. No matter how many, I've like done flashcards to make How do you myself. spell it? No, I'm not going to do that for people. <laughs> That's just mean. <laughs> I'm trying to think and I feel like it's easy, but then I know I'm going to get it wrong. B-U-R-E-A-U-C-R-A-C-Y. I was way off if that's how, yeah, maybe, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll spell check that in the edit. Yes. I don't know. It's, <laughs> it makes me crazy though. I can never get it right. I don't mix up the there, there, mm-hmm. but spelling possessive there mm-hmm. i still i actually have to i always have to pause is it e-i or i-e 
How oh, because of the weird that? thing of like I before E except after C, right? That's not. It's it's not a rule. No. It applies to some things. Some things, but not sometimes. other things. <laughs> okay, last one. Um, if you had, I'm just gonna do it simple. If you had one wish and you can't wish for more wishes, what would your wish be? This is gonna sound really cheesy, but I really wish everybody would wake the fuck up about the climate crisis. Sorry, Agreed. I can't say that, can I? Yeah, you can. Sorry. Sure. Fuck I yeah, just... you can. <laughs> Thank you. I, I think it needed that. I just... Yeah. I can't. I just can't. I mean, there's so, I, well, there's a lot of problems in the world, but I feel like all the other ones will go away mm-hmm. when the earth yeah. turns into a sizzling inferno. Right. Yeah. Um, Sorry, I didn't mean to end on a downer. I know. On a, okay, let's think on a positive note. Okay, on a positive note yes. at the end, what is, the, what is your best advice that you've ever been given or that you like to share with um, creative people. And this is just me. I, I, because I grew up, like I said, I was very shy, very introverted, gay as a day is long, didn't understand any of it, and so I, I was ruled until like my mid thirties by fear, like mm. very, very much by fear. And if I could advise anybody, it's just like just face whatever fear you have and move past it because it truly provides nothing good. It just doesn't in the world. I don't, if you can, if you can face a fear, um, it's just gonna let you be who you really are and let that, let that start to, to like really resonate so fast. Right. Yeah. That's great advice. Thank you. I would agree on that. Thanks. I think the things that are holding you back, you have gotta turn around and just deal with it and it's far less scary. Yeah. Even if it's really scary once you're in that it's like oh, at least you're in it and you're like okay you're right and i think people just generally do that anyway but i think writers are even worse because yeah. we spend so much of our time and of our heads like mulling things over we can create something that's far worse right even worse than what a normal person would be which is already <laughs> bad enough right so and i like that i just implied that writers are not normal it's not, not my intention. Right. Not my intention. Can we strike that? Yes. <laughs> Writers are weird. You gotta be. You gotta be a little bit weird, right? Yeah. I mean, it's 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 the whole. Weird is a compliment to me. Yeah. I mean, I it's, love word. it's, it's I love just weird. being willing to sort of like muck about in stuff mm-hmm. that that other people just have no interest in. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like it's the old joke of like, look at our browser history. <laughs> right. See what that nets you. You know. Oh yeah, because I write horror. Oh like, my goodness! If we, if somebody real, if something happened, I would be in serious trouble. Like, the stages of decomposition of a body. Uh, like, <laughs> great. I so I am writing a horror <laughs> script it, with somebody, uh-huh. um, and I did. I spent the other day looking up the different types of wounds that different types of serrated blades would do. Yeah, so right? I'm starting to understand. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh Lord, this is not good. This will not end well. That'd actually be a funny script. Just call it browser history. Just I, again, from a writer. it's brilliant. I know exactly what I'm getting, right? See, I'm a machine. You just, are. Just, just call me up. Stuff. You need an idea? We'll just make something up after just interview. Charge by 15 minutes. If I could do that job, that would be a great job. Just I would love generate it. ideas. Just idea generator. That's what the old. That's what the old producers do. Right? I know. I love it. Jeez. They're like, all right, we're going to make a picture. Here's what we're going to do. Come up with right? 82,000. Browser years. history. That's what it's all about. Browser <laughs> history. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here. This is great. Um, I had a great time with you. It was lovely to catch up. Yeah. We'll see you next time.